Well, that was just fun. And Jenny and Joan. Joan. I'm all by break. myself. All right. I'd like to call the call to order the committee of the whole meeting for Tuesday, June seventh. First item on our agenda tonight is roll call. Miller. Rosado. Here. Back. Here. Connolly. Connolly. Chance it. Sofa? Here. Wolf? Here. AP. Baron? Here. Lehman? Ayazi? Here. Malay? Ewer? Here. Cerrone? Here. And Vocal Singer? We have eight out of 14. Uh, Malay is here. I just joined. Sorry. Oh, thank you. We have nine. All right. Uh, item number two is a reminder to please speak directly in your microphone for the recording for BATV this evening. Um, and then item three is approval of minutes from April 19th, 2022. Any comments or corrections on those? Make a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Cerrone, second by Sulfa. Roll call, please. Cerrone? Aye. Vogel Singer? Aye. Miller? Rosado? Aye. Back? Aye. Connolly? <coughs> Chancet? Sulfa? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Baron? Aye. Lehman? Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. And Ewer? Aye. Motion carried 10 to 0. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Up next, we have uh, edits to be removed, added, or changed. Anything tonight? No. Nope. Okay. Um, the item five matters from the public for anything not on the agenda tonight. Anybody online? Yep. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on then to item number six, which is a presentation on single use bag fees from the Batavia Environmental Commission. Welcome. All right. Hello. Uh, so let's see. Needed to stop sharing right for us? Stop. Or you need to stop? <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> reminder. Okay. And then I share? Yes. How do I do? Share screen. Oh, the share. Yep. And then the PowerPoint icon there. And let the record reflect that button. Alderman Lehman has joined the meeting. And should be good. All right, um, thanks for having us. So as, you're, as you know, we're the Batavia Environmental Commission. My name is Alex, and we also have Carolyn here and Emma. Um, we are going to be talking tonight about our proposal for a single-use bag fee to reduce single-use plastic um, in Batavia. Um, and I guess I'll preface this too with, I know that there was a news article that was released, I don't know if that was about a month ago, and kind of generated some talk within town and in council, and we did have a plan to present to you guys, and unfortunately that news article came out before we had a chance, um, kind of jumped the gun, but we're here now to talk about that. Um, before we get into our proposal, we wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of background of plastics. Um, Plastic production really started in the 1800s initially when it was developed, and it did offer a way for um, 
a reduction of natural resource use. So we are heavily dependent on wood, um, animal bone, and animal fat. So um, that was good. However, we've now become so dependent on it, it's ingrained in our daily lives. Um, and obviously, as we know, there's a lot of use of plastic now. And although plastic is recyclable, as you can see in this chart, most of it actually ends up in the landfill. And things that are in the landfill do not break down. Um, they just kind of sit and we need more landfill space. Um, so it's become a problem today. We also know a lot about, um, as we've seen in the news, plastic doesn't always end up in the landfill. A lot of it, especially plastic bags and lightweight plastics, escape the disposal trucks, end up in our natural areas and rivers, flow downstream, end up in oceans, impact our marine animals. Um, we also have a lot of harmful effects on humans, um, both from extraction and transportation of oil, the refining and manufacturing process, produce plastic, um, find plastic particles that break down in the environment and we then ingest, along with other animals, then ingest that. And then also, as I mentioned, waste management. What do we do with all of this plastic that needs to be disposed of? Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time like digging into these details. I think we've heard about this over the years. And you should have also received a packet um, of information that you can read through at some other point. And we'll also provide a copy of this presentation to you as well. Again, just to reiterate how much single-use plastic products actually don't end up in landfills or in recycling facilities. Um, I know I've seen it a lot on the Fox River in town when I'm walking on the river walk, in forest preserves <coughs> when I'm in the woods or the prairies. So um, it's obviously a nuisance from that perspective as well. So we are all familiar with this adage of think globally, act locally. Um, and that's really what we want to do here in Batavia. Um, just again, reiterating the environmental impact that plastic use, ha use has on marine animals. 100,000 animals are estimated to be killed each year as a result of plastic bag pollution. Um, there's enough plastic thrown away each year to circle the earth four times. Every minute, one million plastic bags are used, and less than 1% of those bags are actually recycled. Um, another issue of plastic bags specifically is that a lot of people mistakenly think that to recycle them, you can put them in the curbside recycling, which is not the case. Um, and when that does happen, it will clog up the recycling machinery, and those have to be shut down. Um, Grays Lake Waste Management reports that it costs nearly $1,500 per hour when machines are forced off to clear those plastic bag blockages. So for our um, proposal, which We'll get into in a little bit. We are including single-use bags, which you may have heard me mention a few minutes ago. So that would include both plastic and paper bags. Um, so why are we including paper bags? A lot of people may think that's actually a more environmentally friendly alternative. While paper bags do decompose um, if they escape our waste streams and recycling streams, they do actually generate more air and water pollution in production than plastic bags um, and also require more energy to recycle than plastic bags. Um, so that's ultimately with our proposal and the goal of having a fee is to reduce our consumption of single-use products and encourage reuse of either these plastic or paper bags, 
or use of reusable materials. So I'll let Carolyn take over the plastic survey that we released the other month. So a group of us from St. Charles, including members of the Natural Resource Commission and uh, Batavia Environmental Commission and some community members got together and have been working on this process together. And we decided that we needed a, just a little bit more information to kind of get, to take the temperature of the community. And we really thought it was important try to, to try to share this across the Fox Valley. So we, we did a press release, we got in the newspapers, uh, the, we were in the city e-blasts, we were on Facebook groups, we, we made an extra effort to try to get it in places that people necessarily wouldn't look for environmental information. So I think that the, the survey did pretty well. We got 373 people to respond to it. Uh, this is the location of the respondents. Um, as we guessed in Batavia, um, we, we had a, probably a little bit more outreach um, and you know, I shared it at a few more places. But I was, I was really heartened that it got into places like Elgin, St. Charles, and Geneva as well because they're an important part, you know, we're, we're down river, right? So it's important to, to kind of get a feel for this whole um, issue from everyone. So uh, you were sent a, a copy of the survey. We're just gonna take out a few pieces of it. Otherwise we would be here for a very, very long time. Um, so the first thing we kind of asked people, well, what are you using? And these are the actual numbers as opposed to percentages. Um, so each person could answer each question and how much they use single-use plastic bags. So, you know, most people are still using single-use plastic bags. Um, a lot of the people in the survey are, are using reusable bags, which is great. Um, so that's heartening to know that, that we're kind of on the right track, but there's still a lot, we know that there's a lot of single-use uh, bag usage. So the next question we thought was important to ask is, well, how, are, how concerned are you about the impact of plastic bags in the environment or plastic waste in the environment? And 91% said that they were at a level of four or five, which is most concerned. So we got into specific questions. What do we do about it? What would you support us to do? So the first one is prohibit the use of single-use plastic bags for groceries and other shopping. 64% said they would support that. 21 not sure, and then 15% would not support. Secondarily, we're, we asked, require a fee for single-use plastic paper bags at the store. In a somewhat similar response, 65% said they would support that. Uh, 17 weren't sure, and 18% said they weren't liking the idea. The next question we asked, should we ask encourage stores and restaurants to use recyclable and sustainable products? And that was a resounding yes. And the same thing goes to prohibit use of styrofoam food containers for carry out of food. 85% supported that as well. Um, we're not pursuing that right now because I think that um, as we've seen some of, from other bands, sometimes something like that can have unintended consequences and we know that uh, food service is having su uh, supply issues right now. So that's, that is not something that we are interested in taking on at this point. Restrict single-use plastic items such as plastic straws, stirs, and utensils. 70% say yes. Uh, encourage restaurants to only include straws, utensils, and condiments if requested. There's an 88% yes rate, which is pretty good. Only 4% no. So I think that's a resounding, please do something about this. Emma's going to take, oh. No, Alex is going. Alex is going to take the next section. Um, so we wanted to just kind of quickly talk about some of the other um, ordinances and legislation that have been put in place across the country um, before we get into our proposal. 
So I'm sure as most of us are aware, there are several states in the country that have initiated plastic bag bans. Um, there are also states that have implemented plastic bans that impose a paper bag fee, um, as well as several US territories that have also outright banned disposal bags altogether, and hundreds of counties and municipalities across the country that have enacted their own ordinances um, of either placing a fee on bags or banning them outright. Within Illinois, there are several communities that have implemented single-use bag legislation. And a lot of these are um, ordinances that we have kind of combed through and used in our proposal. Again, just reiterating, there's a lot of movement and traction on this within the Chicago area. So we're just one of several communities that are looking to do this if we haven't already done it. Um, so as an example, the city of Chicago has implemented a fee. They originally did have a ban and then they um, weren't really seeing great results. And that's actually, I think in the packet, there's a study that does highlight outright bans don't really seem to do what we want it to do. Fees seem to work better to reduce use of single-use bags. Um, Evanston, again, as an example of that, they had a ban and they're currently reassessing that. Um, obviously with COVID coming into play, that kind of threw things up in the air as well. And a lot of communities were either pausing it or kind of backtracking what they had done before. Um, Oak Park has a fee, and what I thought was really interesting about that is they've seen a drastic decrease in the amount of single-use bags used per month. So they went from 1.4 million bags per month, and decreasing to an average of 200,000 bags sold per month. Um, again, Woodstock, another community. And Edwardsville also just recently implemented a fee as well. Um, also to note that the state of Illinois numerous times has talked about um, a bag fee legislation and for various reasons, it hasn't happened. It was kind of paused again when COVID came up, but we would expect that at some point, this is gonna be back up for discussion and our goal is to try and implement something before it happens at the state level. Um, while the goal of what we're doing is not to collect a revenue from this, if there is going to be a fee collected, it would be great to keep that locally and be able to use that to fund different projects that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, as Carolyn mentioned too, in the survey there is a lot of support for um, decreasing other single-use plastics. So this would be things like straws and plastic utensils. Um, these are items that just automatically can't be recycled. And there are examples of several states with bans and restrictions on those products as well. Um, including the city of Chicago, they have an ordinance that just encourages establishments to only um, hand out uh, foodware and straws upon request. So there's no fee as part of that, but it's just kind of a um, encouragement to reduce use of that product. So I'm here to talk about our hope for Batavia and our proposal to enact a 10 cent bag fee per bag. And like we discussed earlier, that would be any single use bag, so paper or plastic. Four cents of that would be retained by the retailer. Uh, four cents of that would be retained by the city of Batavia for a proposed um, environmental or sustainability fund that I'll discuss in a minute. Um, and two cents retained for the Kane County environmental programs. So along with the um, bag fee, we would also like to take the example that Chicago set and um, have a, you know, other plastic, single use plastics only available upon request. So things like straws, utensils, stirs, condiments, what you find at restaurants. 
Um, obviously, retailers can use the funds collected at their discretion. For the city of Batavia, we are thinking that we could have something um, called the Sustainability Fund, and we would use the money for things like recycling education programs to improve our recycling efforts, energy efficiency rebates, street tree plantings, public tree care, refunding the cost of promotional bags. So if the city um, helped to pay for bags that people could use that were reusable, that this fund could help pay that back. Um, and then also projects to um, enhance the river. At the county level, the funds could be used for collecting household hazardous waste or for having events that collect that kind of waste, um, as well as other things that are difficult to recycle. So things like consumer electronics or latex paint, textiles, that sort of stuff. Also, we see a need for education at the county and city level about recycling, um, especially when it comes to people um, accidentally uh, contaminating their recycling and not understanding how to avoid that or why that's so important. And then in addition to that, um, the money could be used to uh, improve infrastructure for repair and reuse of items, recycling and composting. And in order to get the information out, we have a few ideas. We would publish an information sheet to social media. We would have a press release, um, possibly bag distribution events at local housing communities so that if anyone does not already have a reusable bag, they can get one. Um, presentation at chamber events. Um, information tables at major retailers in town so people understand what the fee is for and how it will be used. And um, like we've kind of already mentioned, this is a regional effort. We've been working with the St. Charles Natural Resources Committee, um, and they're proposing a similar fee in their town. Geneva doesn't have home rule, so they cannot impose a fee like this, but Elgin is working on something similar, and Aurora is watching to see what happens in our towns as well. Um, if we are able to make this happen, then we would uh, be pursuing local support as well, support in the city of Batavia through the Chamber of Commerce, local businesses, Batavia Main Street, Boy Scouts and Girl Scout troops, Sierra Club, the League of Women's Voters, HC Storm Green Team, and other groups like this to help us get the word out and distribute reusable bags to people who maybe need them still. And lastly, we just wanted to close with a quote from Woodstock Council member Mike Turner. He said, although we see it as a fee, he said the tax is the best kind you'll ever have because it's an avoidable tax. It's a tax you don't have to pay. Find a bag, use the bag, don't pay the tax. It's pretty simple. So we see it, and we hope that you do too, as a win-win because it can be avoided. But if you do have to pay it, it helps to support local business, and it also helps to support sustainability efforts. Questions? Anybody have questions, Mark? I'm just going to recuse myself from the discussion because it affects my business. So, his jacket tonight too. Yes, <laughs> Is Aldi handled a lot of Ellen. plastic bags? Your Honor, go ahead. When this thing uh, originally got the attention <coughs> the first time around, it made its way all the way to Channel Seven News, <coughs> and so that one. When you get on Chicago TV, I will tell you, I'm very impressed by the coverage that you get and the reaction you get, because that really drives people interest. And so the morning after that happened, the phone upstairs in my office rang probably seven times for people to call up and offer an opinion about this. And it wasn't necessarily a negative opinion, but there, what it was, and I think it may have been a group, dog owners were very concerned that we were gonna take away their ability to get plastic bags because that's the instrument they use on their nightly walks or morning walks or whatever with their dogs is that they use the plastic bag. And so they were almost pleading on the phone. I, you know, nobody knew anything about buying there. They just thought there was gonna be an outright ban and you wouldn't be able to get a plastic bag. But uh, you know, in checking with some of my staff, I, I guess we're of the opinion, we're, we are running at an all-time high in Batavia with dogs. We've never ever had as many dogs as we now have in Batavia with the number of people who have them. And they're nice dogs and you know, they're not causing any problem, but the folks really cherish the plastic bag as the way they can solve their problem of picking up the dogs residual as they walk down the sidewalks and the streets. And I, admi I admire that because I think that's 
something as a city we should strive to see, you know, continue to see. I'd rather not see the other type of situation where they didn't pick it up. So I just share that. I don't know how that factors into what you're proposing here, but I, that is a major issue that I think is out there in the neighborhood with folks as far as the plastic bag is used as, as the tool to deal with the dogs. I don't know if we have to respond. I'm a dog owner myself, and I try really hard not to use plastic bags. But even with trying to not use plastic bags, I still have enough. They accumulate somehow. They multiply. Um, and I still have them. And also, you can I sometimes buy like little rolls, too. And they're not super expensive. It's probably, I haven't done the math, but it's probably cheaper than buying the 10-cent bags and using them. But maybe Alex... Do you want to weigh in at all either? She, I know she owns dogs too. <laughs> no, I think I just, I would just reiterate what Emma said. I am a dog owner. Um, so when I'm walking my dog, I do use plastic bags because it is kind of the easiest and most clean way to pick up after my dog. Um, but yeah, I, I try not to use plastic bags, but I have accumulated them. So I, I do use those. I do buy the rolls. I'll buy like a big kind of box from the store of the rolls. And um, I personally don't think they're really very expensive. So that seems to work for me. But um, yeah. Nick. I have a question. Um, and it stemmed from, a, th this is great. I mean, I, I would, I support a tax, but I would not, relish being the first community around here uh, to do it. Um, I would rather it come from the state level uh, where it's equal than the retailers have an equal. Have you reached out to any of the retailers and what response have you gotten from them? We have not reached out to any retailers personally. We kind of use the, the Oak Park example and the Woodstock example of how it's worked for them. But I would, I would suppose that that would be a part of trying to move forward in what this might look like and who it might apply to, that we would have to bring in more resources to find out exactly who this applies to and what it means. I would be, I, 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 I would caution using Oak Park. I mean, they are a... a Overall, uh, a, a cutting edge town that, that buys into this, where um, I wouldn't necessarily compare Batavia to that. I would say it's, you know, with our um, aging and, and the retirements coming in and fixed incomes, we, we don't have the same kind of demographics that, that they do, but I, I think so I have that concerns with that. I think. I, I understand what you're saying about it, but the businesses that this applies to are primarily going to be big box stores that are dealing with this all over the country in another community. So they're already dealing with uh, bag fees, um, bag bans, you know, Target, you know, Trader Joe's is already going to do that on their own. Um, so they're, they're not going to apply to the small mom and pop shops. Um, I can say that correctly. And, you know, if you, if you look at the packet that we sent you, I think one of the things that we, we also need to remember is, you know, most people have lots of bags in their home. I, they can even reuse a plastic bag. So I, I don't think that this is an unwarranted or onerous fee for most people because I think most people have them. They've been given them. We can even come up, and that's one of our proposals, if we th feel like it's appropriate, is to get people, uh, maybe some local businesses and not the city, to sponsor bags to hand out to people that are low income. So to make sure that they have appropriate bags to bring to the store, and we'll make them fun and interesting so people want the bags. On the positive side, I, I agree with you there. I, I think uh, communication uh, an education around here. I mean, as I was watching the presentation, I'm like, I'm going home and telling my wife, we got to put reusable bags in our car so we, we limit it, you know, but I'd rather it be my choice. But uh, uh, the education and communication are, are key, so I like those aspects of this. 
did want to add just a little bit to what Carolyn was talking about, too. Um, so I have a friend who lives in Duluth, Minnesota, and the city of Duluth just also passed a bag fee ordinance. But she was telling me that the community kind of rallied around this and did um, kind of like take a bag, leave a bag programs. There were also sewing groups that um, had donated fabric and they made bags to distribute to community members, to people who needed or wanted reusable bags. So I think, um, you know, if we decide to pursue this, we can get really creative with programs like that as well to support our community members so it isn't um, very onerous and that we're making it as equitable as possible. Can I, sorry to jump, just one last question from me. Um, you had mentioned it, this wouldn't apply to mom and pop. Do you differentiate the retailer of, of who this would apply to and who it doesn't? Yeah, I think um, one thing that we don't have laid out in this presentation, but is in the packet, is that depending on which ordinance you look at, um, some ordinances say any business larger than 5,000 square feet, some say larger than 7,000, so obviously that would have to be all you know hammered out, but um, the smaller shops this wouldn't apply to. I think the concern is, you know, when you have a different shopping experience in bags than if you go to, say, the tea tree, right, or if you go to Jewel, right? You're bringing one bag home from the tea tree, and they're a small business, right? And you could bring home 10 or 15 plastic bags from Jewel because, they, you know, you're buying so much stuff there, and that's the case with a lot of the big box stores. So it does make sense to do that. There, there are some... Uh, cities that are proposing it that it apply to everyone and the bag bans generally do too but we're we think that this will be more effective in building the behavior that we want to reuse bags which is really the goal is just like find a way for them to bring their reusable bags and we've in all the research that we've seen about 10 cents seems right giving people money back doesn't seem to work bans don't seem to work but in that range, and, and we pick the 10 cents also because, and I don't want to shortchange Batavia because I think Batavia is pretty progressive. I believe that. We had the most support for a lot of the things that we had in the survey, but um, I can't even remember where I'm going with that. But in, 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 the, in the bag fee, I think that that's kind of the sweet spot, that that's what Elgin's looking at. That's what Northbrook's looking at a fee to. Um, St. Charles is going to propose the same thing, so it can be the same, so people know what to expect wherever they go. And, and we can't, I, I would love the state to do it. That's what I kept saying. I want the state to do this. Why isn't the state doing it? But sometimes you have to start locally and it has to go up. And that's why we think it's really important to start here. Abby? Um, I, well, I was going to ask you to go back to the proposal slide because I couldn't remember if the square footage question or if that was listed on there or not and who it would apply to or not. Um, and then the other comment I was going to say is that in the ordinances that have been proposed by the state, like they mentioned, there's a grandfather date that's moved with, with the proposed legislation um, up with it that municipalities that pass something by a certain date would be grandfathered in. We get to, you know keep our fees, they wouldn't go to the state. Um, and I think the more and more cities that adopt this, the state, I would imagine the state will see the revenue source draining and pass it quicker than, um, than they are getting to it now. Um, and I agree with Carolyn. I think there's a lot of room for Batavia to be a leader in general um, and to take the lead on some of these. We're certainly in step with the surrounding communities all looking at this too. The survey data shows that people are generally responsive to this. This is not something that our kids are going to find weird, just like our grandparents didn't find it weird. There is a just a weird window in time where plastic bags became a norm, where our grandparents never used them, our kids won't use them. It's not, Aldi proves, behaviors can be modified if, if asked to um and i don't want to put you on the spot mark but how big is aldi is it the aldi store in batavia like for reference how many square feet is aldi it's about fourteen thousand. okay so they'd qualify not that they have 
a problem with plastic bags. Berkeley is the same way. Uh, um, we can be trained and we can be okay <laughs> with slight mod modifications to habits. I did, I brought a, a visual aid here. These are my bags. And it seems, it seems kind of strange to show you my bags. But why am I showing you my bags, right? Is because I t I've taken these bags to the grocery store since 2013. So I'm guessing these bags have seen over 400 uses. And in some of the research, they say, well, you have to use something 100 times or 130 times to equal plastic. Well, you know, for those of us that go to the grocery store every week, that, that goes pretty quick. And if it's a decent bag, it's going to last. And now I, I keep it in my car. I bring it every week. You know, during the pandemic, it was frightful going to stores and coming back with all those bags. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a big savings doing that, and I know other people can do it. Jen? Um, and just one thing to touch upon. Um, with this ordinance, it kind of um, hits one of the goals for the Greenest Region um, Compact that we all agreed to a year ago um, and that we're looking to pursue. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually goal. Let's try to find it. Goal W. W R four and oh, that's the audit. Um, WR20. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the goals that this goes on with that. Um, and to piggyback off of what Abby said, we have a large retailer that is already doing this. They charge for um, bags, and you don't see people fussing about it at the store. They, people are just trained to either purchase them and they pay the fee, um, grab a box, or bring their own items there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. And off of what Jen says, um, Aldi is one of the most affordable places to shop at in Batavia. So people who already might need um, to find the best price for produce and meat are going there and providing their own bags or using um, whatever resources they have and not relying on stores for to provide that for them. Um, I also agree with Abby and with um, the Environmental Commission that um, I think Batavia is ready for this. And we are an outdoorsy um, green community. And I think a lot of people would be excited about this opportunity. Um, I think we can be leaders um, in the Fox Valley, um, not only in this, but in lots of different areas um, for us to move forward to support um, support our communities and in areas like this. So I think it's exciting, and I think it's something that we should definitely consider. I guess my comment would be the only thing that I want to know is who's administering it? How are we collecting it? Is it on the businesses to report, similar to the way we do the gas tax? Um, you know, what are we going to use as a metric to, to know that we're collecting the right amounts and that the stores are collecting the right amounts? So we can keep track of that. And also, I think this is one of those that I hope it ends up failing, that we don't raise money from it, that people just don't buy the bags. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think the goal is mm -hmm. with this, is to get to that point where maybe at the first, the beginning of this, it raises a lot of money and we get to do some things with it. But then eventually that dollar value tapers off and goes away so people aren't buying the bags. Yeah, the goal is absolutely zero. Right, and, and, zero. and that's something that I think we need to talk about because I think the public needs to be aware that that's where we want to be, is that we want that to go away and everybody to use those bags. I mean, I think of the things I do and the looks I get when I walk into even Home Depot or Menards or something. No, I don't want a bag. I'm just going to carry out what I bought because I don't want another bag. You know, and, and how often it is when I go through the bags that we have, and I'm like, where did this other bag of bags come from, you know, to, to get rid of these? And then you think about when you do come home with five in each hand when you walk out of any store, and that's how we end up with all of the plastic. 
Um, so would you direct staff to work with Batavia Environmental Commission to come up with a, perhaps a draft ordinance um, for you to take a look at and then also um, do the investigation of how the uh, fee is administered from the standpoint of is it just the honor system with the retailers to tell us how many bags they charge people for or whether there is some more exact uh, mechanism right. in order to determine and how to collect the fees because I'm not sure right. and how we would do that. Yeah, and right up front I just kind of would like to know that because it's not like we have you know a hundred places we're going to get that from but there has to be some time spent in it who's what staff's going to be responsible for that? What are we asking businesses to do? How much time are we asking them to spend to create some kind of document or some justification for what they're paying or not paying? So I think that those are some of the questions that I have in it. I know we don't have full council here tonight, but I think we've got support for this. Um, that's my feeling. And from the public side of it, I think we've got that support. You know, when you when you go to things that happen in town that the farmers market every Saturday and you look at how many people walk through there, no, I don't need a plastic bag for my vegetables. Just throw them in on top of everything else in my bag that I got here. Because so many you know, bring their own bags right. anyways. And, you know, and that's the the reality of it. And I think that carries over then when you've got that bag in the car all the time that you just take it with you when you know you can use it. So could I propose that um, since we are potentially going to have two cow meetings that we don't have on the uh, 14th and the 21st, I'm imagining that the 28th might be a, a pretty, um, you know, sizable agenda. And then the following meeting is going to be another city council meeting that happens on a Tuesday night because of the July 4th holiday. So that the next time that we would bring this back would be um, potentially the second uh, Tuesday in July. That's okay. I think yeah. that's fine. I, it, okay. That gives you time to do some of the research and mm -hmm. to see what some yeah. of the other communities it, are right. doing. Yeah, how, how they administer it, yeah. who's responsible for it. Is it somebody in their utility billing department that does it? Mm -hmm. Know how how we would do that Sounds good. internally. Sounds good. I think Thanks that's questions questions we have to think about so we don't create something and then all of a sudden have to figure out, okay, now who's going to do this? When is St. Charles doing their presentation? Isn't it soon too? I know that it was soon, but I don't know when. They're we might a have slightly different schedule as well. mm -hmm. for meetings. I know if, if you look at the, the sample ordinances uh -huh. that we I sent out in the email I yesterday. St. Charles. Yeah, I thought he mentioned that they had given the presentation. I know he spoke at one of their city oh, council Oh, there was meetings. definitely a presentation well, given yeah. to their city council. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they've uh, brought it back to like consider an ordinance. That they was their kind of the annual report. report. And people asked them about it, and they weren't mm -hmm. presenting it yet, okay. which is how it got picked up in the news and how mm -hmm. it got taken before anybody actually had a formal Present. presentation ready. Gotcha. That's how that worked. Okay. I have another question, too, though, in terms of um, information you might want to add. Because So is it going to be 7,000 or 10,000 square feet? That would or be 5, determined 000. by the research we do 5, here. So I think that's important too. Is Who what is are the businesses that? this would even apply to? I mean, how many businesses are 10,000 square feet bigger in Batavia that use? And I think bags? I think that's jewel. where staff comes yeah, in because we yeah, we need to get that data from staff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we yeah. could just be Alan, Tony here. all across the board for all businesses. I, I mean, we could come up with that decision on that or take more of a stepped phased approach like you know this year let's see how it goes for this square feet of businesses and then maybe reevaluate it and you know yeah. shrink it down and get that feedback right Tony did you want to say something <laughs> yes thank you Alan um, yeah I, uh, I fully support this uh, my daughter's banned bags in our house about 10 years ago um, <laughs> And uh, it's been, been successful. Um, a couple of comments on, on some of the discussion. Um, Mary, you, brought, you raised the concern that, that people had, uh, have contacted you about dog bags. I would point out you can buy biodegradable plant-based dog bags uh, online. I would imagine you probably buy them at some pet stores. Um, in terms of, uh, Nick, your concerns with, with uh, you know, Batavia being first and um, what this could do to businesses, 
I don't see this as driving business away uh, from Batavia to save 10 cents on a bag. Uh, in fact, I see it as a savings for some of our businesses because bags are an expense that they, they pay for. Uh, they wouldn't have to pay for them where they could offset the pay uh, with their portion that they would receive. Um, I think Batavia is a prime town for this. We are the home of Aldi, and Aldi's been doing this for decades in charging bags. I think they're, they're a leader. Um, and uh, Mary also remember when Berkeley did this, uh, you know, they on, the, on their own decided they were not going to give out plastic bags anymore and uh, offer boxes or uh, pay for paper bags. Um, you were getting phone calls then. I imagine those had, had died down and, and you know, there wasn't a big hurt to or loss of business there. So I, I just want to say that I fully support this. And I think there's some some huge opportunities. One thing that uh, would does concern me, uh, which I see a lot, uh, gas stations uh, that are not necessarily gas station, but convenience stores. Uh, someone will buy, come in and buy a can of pop and a candy bar and they'll have it in a bag, uh, probably for a matter of minutes. Um, and I, w I would think we should address that as well, uh, not and not just say, well, it's got got to be ten thousand or seven thousand square feet. I think if we're going to have a ban and we want to stop use, we we can do it. So I would be supportive of uh, of, of a, a program uh, to end the use of single plastics in, in Batavia. Thanks. Can I respond, Nick? Yeah, I. Uh, Tony, good points. I just wanted to say, when, when my points, I wasn't arguing for one way or the other. I didn't want to make the mistake. Like, you making the assumption that Berkeley's business isn't worse. I don't know what their numbers are. It could have hurt them. We don't know. Um, I would like to hear from the stakeholders, the businesses that would be affected by this, um, what their thoughts are and what their concerns are. Uh, as well, I don't want to make any assumptions that this all of behavior is yeah. for this. Um, you know that that's uh, I just let's get the information and and, and do it the right way. The staff yeah, will make point, sure that we communicate I about that with um, stakeholder groups when the um, draft ordinance comes back. That people have an opportunity to weigh in and present their uh, opinion on how that might affect um, them personally. Right. And definitely reach out through Main, Main Street, Street and, and Chamber, chamber so that course. way we get some feedback from them on how they would handle that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and, and more than just, you know, going to 10 of them on the Randall Road Strip, but be able to ask them to specifically try to ask some of the smaller businesses mm -hmm. how they would handle that if they got, you know, if that change was presented to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alan? Yeah. Um, so current businesses that already have this model and are already um, have their fees set up, would they get grandfathered in with their own? Would they stay doing their own thing, like Berkeley and Aldi? Well, Berkeley's doing bags, and they're not charging. They're not charging? They're waiting for us to put out the ordinance to begin charging. For the Berkeley's not charging? No. I would think that that would be fair to grandfather them in. Be interested to know what Aldi has done, and other obviously they have a presence in places that have already enacted ban. Um, I would assume they get grandfathered in. Do we know anybody at all? Do we know yeah. anybody that might answer all the questions? <laughs> you know, Not anyone those in this questions. discussion. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, with Aldi being it, their headquarters in our community, and they are one of the fastest growing supermarkets in the United States. It's almost like we need to piggyback off of them, mm -hmm. of what they're doing, and support their initiatives. Because mm -hmm. I know there has been, and I won't get the scenario or the anecdote right, I know there has been pushback from Target in other cities where this has been enacted. Um, I don't remember when it was or where it was or what the outcome was. I assume that mm -hmm. it was passed. <laughs> you know, but they have, they have pushed back in other places. But I wonder if some of that has changed with the energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody going green and putting those initiatives in at their office, being sustainable. Mm -hmm. And at first, it might have been fear. It would be interesting to see the results that have come from the communities that haven't acted it. I mean, but I'd rather react on 
those facts than on anecdotal mm -hmm. theories that us right. nine have sitting here. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think we've got direction to go with, and we'll get some information and then get an ordinance back in front of us, and we'll make some decisions on sizes on who, who's within the, the ordinance and who's not, and then move forward with it. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm stepping out for the next one, Alan. Okay. And Mark's stepping back in. <laughs> it's Ward. Okay. You're it. Okay, up next is item seven, uh, an approval on a Class A liquor license application Ooh. for Sturdy Shelter Brewing, LLC, located at 10 South Shum Shumway. Uh, so moved. And let's see, <laughs> Dan is not here. Right. I guess I'll just take it. Mm -hmm. He's on. Uh, or is Dan? He's online, I think. Dan is online? I didn't think yes, he was. Yes, he is. Oh, he's on now. We don't have them back up there, so I can't see. <laughs> I mean, our we chief Dan is here, but it's we gotta ask him what he got <laughs> Yeah, I'll be very happy when I don't have to try to manage a screen and a room. <laughs> it's multi. You're talking Dan Ewell, our chief, not Dan Chanzet. This is government service. Yeah, I don't think Dan Chanzet's on. Okay, yeah. so we have Sturdy Shelter Brewing here, and uh, they have an application pending for a Class A liquor license. Um, as you may know from other times that uh, we've had Frank here telling us about his business, they're opening a craft brewery on uh, Shumway Avenue. They're right in the heat of doing their, their build out right now, see things happening there every day. Um, and as part of their business plan, in addition to um, serving their beer, they are also intending to serve wine. And we don't have a mechanism under our current liquor code where uh, people uh, can obtain two uh, different types of liquor license and so under our code it makes more most sense because there is the anticipation that um, they would also occasionally be serving food that that falls more under our tavern um, license than under our craft brewery license and so that is why you see this business applying for a class A license as opposed to the class H license. Um, Chief Ewell do you have anything to add? No, that's an accurate summary for him. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah, I don't have anything to add. I have no problems with this, but I'm going to suggest that before we write this ordinance, maybe we need to call the folks at the movie theater down here because they've indicated to me they're coming for a liquor license. Oh, we already have a provision under our liquor license um, that they can apply for the entertainment um, venue. Yeah, but I'm not sure that that's going to cover everything that they want to do there. Uh, I think and we're not changing the liquor code tonight. It's one business as a well, I know that, but I, I, you know, what, what he's talking about here, I think there could be some rollover into the theater thing. And the theater mm -hmm. thing where is the, the theater out there is really going to town. They're going to tear the whole back wall of the building off and put in the biggest screen in the state of Illinois out there. So, and they've got one of the things they are looking for is a license for both having a restaurant and a bar. And they're going to serve liquor in the movie theater at movies are going to have waitresses at the door greeting you and when you sit down they'll take your order and supposedly they'll serve you and then the lights will go out and they'll show the movie and then in the middle of the movie they turn turn the movie out and intermission the thing and then they come back out and see if you want another or whatever you're doing i mean they've got some pretty involved ideas out there and i'm just thinking if we're going to play with the ordinance for them but no, we're we, not are not. We're not we are not the changing the ordinance. Changing the ordinance. Well. They're applying for something that already exists under our ordinance, with the, which is the uh, Class A liquor How license. about if they wanted to serve food, is that? It's okay. covered under there. So our taverns can serve food as well. Okay. Well, I'm just saying that I think we'll be back here having another discussion in the near term mm -hmm. with the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Last week they talked to Scott and I three times, so they're, they're definitely very interested in doing something. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Question, uh, is there a cost difference for the application? 
Um, yes, there is. I think it's a $200, right? <laughs> it's it's $1,300 for the Class H license, and it's $1,500 for the um, Class A license. But the Class A license also offers you the opportunity to have the adjunct outdoor service license that is another thing that will be added in the future as well as the package liquor so the purchase so is to take away it has a lot more flexibility service. okay perfect so i think it includes paying, paying for two licenses he's paying no for he's the paying difference for just the one license which is two hundred dollars more expensive than the class yes. h which is restricted Did we already issue to, an h or not? we have issued an h to energy city brewing however okay. They have recently um, come back and asked us. They are wanting to do service outside, and so we may need to um, do a text amendment that would allow them to do that. Frank hasn't already got the H license. No, he has not. This okay, is the so this first is just license one. If he's applying I just for. want to make sure we're not charging them for two. If they had already gotten one and decided they needed to get the other, to we change? We wouldn't do that to Frank. Right. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Make sure this is all clear in my mind. <laughs> Frank, I promise I'll make up that two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know. I was. I can pretty much guarantee already. you. I'm like um, the first night the council close? leaves the meeting here and has to go <laughs> to your place. Sours at me. We'll take care of that. <laughs> we'll have a place for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now we have to have let somebody in there from the press so that way we're all good so no, right. they can tell we didn't talk about city business <laughs> we know how to how to operate yeah i think the uh i think that that class a uh license also includes live entertainment yes that mm -hmm. falls under it too yeah so it really is a is a kind of a catch-all yeah. we're going to be a um class three state license which allows you to a certain amount of self-distribution along with um, tap room. And it, it also allows you to serve other things apart from beer. So it fits into our state license well, the, the tavern license okay. here uh, in the city. Anybody else have any questions? Got an opening date yet? Well, we're, I'm afraid to <laughs> say, uh, <laughs> because uh, everyone will say, I thought you said it'd be open. We're, we're hoping at the end of August. Okay. We're hoping. That's great. If you need any testers, <laughs> yes, <laughs> let us know. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, no other questions. I'll make the motion that uh, we approve a Class A liquor license for Sturdy Shelter Brewing LLC, located at 10 Shumway Avenue. Second. Motion by Wolf. Second by Ewer. Roll call, please. Wolf. Aye. Baron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. And Yazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Sarone? Aye. Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller absent? Rosado? Aye. Beck absent? Connolly absent? Chancet absent? And Sofa? Aye. Motion carried 10 to 0. Okay. And Sarah, what time did you join the meeting? We didn't have the full screen up here, so I didn't see when you joined. Do you know? It was seven. It was uh, seven o two. I was having some technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna make sure the record's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep, we will. All right, up next is item number eight, resolution 2263R, Illinois Municipal League TIF ordinance support of TIF as a local economic development tool. Good Shannon. evening, everyone. Um, I'm before you this evening with a draft of model legislation from the Illinois Municipal League. They reached out to member organizations this spring. Um, as you're probably aware, every once in a while, there's some proposed legislation that comes down the pipeline that may impact local municipalities' ability to use the TIF tax increment financing tool um, as, as it is currently laid out in the state statutes. Uh, most recently, one of the um, proposed state bills was 2298 coming out of 
um, Arlington Heights with um, some proposed deleterious um, reduction of the blight criteria that, that could pose some challenges, as well as um, giving the Joint Review Board some veto-like power. And um, the Illinois Municipal League, the American Planning Association, Illinois chapter, um, and many, many municipalities uh, reviewed the legislation and um, reached out and you know asked for, for it not to be passed. Um, we heard back in April that the proposed amendment was quashed for the time being, but it